Associate of the Russian Czechist Igor Strelkov, Z-War correspondent Maxim Klimov gave a long interview to Russian media. In it, he spoke about the catastrophic losses of the Russian army and also predicted very unpleasant events in the near future. Klimov no longer believes in Russia's victory. According to him, the losses of the Russian army in the war are so great that there is an acute shortage of manpower. The command of the Russian armed forces is forced to throw valuable military specialists, including bearers of state secrets, into the assaults. Do we report real figures of losses to the leadership? I have data on losses of individual units, which I should not have, but they did. What Shoigu voiced in his report to Putin on Avdiivka is fundamentally different from the real picture. We have begun a mass sweeping of specialists and into the infantry, and this is not only UAVs. Now they are sending trained artillerymen, diesel operators, electronic warfare specialists and others en masse to the infantry. I know of an example where a hydroacoustic officer from a submarine was served seven years on a nuclear strategic submarine cruiser, went to the Marines. We are constantly hitting the enemy's well-prepared defenses head on, right into the frontal and the strongest part of the wall. Very significant losses, the Russian propagandist said. He knows of a case where an entire company of the Russian armed forces was completely eliminated in two weeks of fighting. Only one soldier managed to survive and keep his limbs. He assured that there is no collapse of the Ukrainian defense in sight. The Russian army is managing to advance, but it is gaining territory at a cost of the lives of a colossal number of its soldiers. Klimov also hinted that the Ukrainian defense forces, having achieved maximum weakening of the enemy, could deliver a crushing retaliatory strike. Right now, we are really on the threshold of very threatening events. The fact that TV shows our advancement. Sorry, but the Ukrainians have reserves and they are preparing. They have not brought them into battle. The Z propagandist said, the Russian armed forces are currently suffering the heaviest losses in the last two years in the war against Ukraine. In October alone, the occupiers lost 695 units of military equipment. The Russians lost the most armored infantry vehicles in October, 253 units. Tanks came second in place, 102 units, and armored personnel carriers came in fourth, 41 units. The list also included two Su-24 bombers, two more Su-34 fighters, and an Mi-28 helicopter. According to experts, such colossal losses in equipment for the Russian armed forces will lead to an acute shortage as early as 2025. This is probably why the Kremlin is so persistent in talking about its readiness to sit down at the negotiating table. Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski believes that the issue of intercepting Russian missiles over Ukraine by member states may be raised at the next NATO ministerial meeting. He said this on TVN24. According to Sikorski, the discussion of the possibility of destroying missiles outside of Ukrainian territory should be considered in the context of self-defense. Next week, there will be a regular NATO ministerial meeting. Perhaps this issue will be on the agenda, the Polish minister said. Sikorsky also spoke about relations with Ukraine and commented on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's request to shoot down Russian missiles flying towards Poland before they cross the country's border. He noted that this raises the question of where the right to self-defense begins and ends. Do we have the right to shoot down such a missile only when it is over our territory? In this case, there is no doubt, but then there may be risks. As happened in Przewaduch, where the missile debris caused damage, injured, or even killed people, Sikorsky said. He added that there may be different opinions on Ukraine's request, and this issue requires discussion and agreement among allies. Recently, the U.S. Helsinki Commission asked President Joe Biden to allow Poland to shoot down missiles over Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated in July that Ukraine and Poland are working on creating a mechanism that will allow Polish air defense to track missiles and drones over Ukrainian territory. For this part, the Polish Minister of Defense noted that before making such a decision, Warsaw needs to consult with its NATO partners. 
At the same time, Dutch Defence Minister Ruben Brekelmans stated that the possibility of partner countries shooting down missiles and drones from Russia over Ukraine poses more risks than benefits. He added that this is exactly the type of escalation that NATO allies are trying to prevent. Brekelmans believes that this approach of the partners is also in favor of Ukraine. We should always look for creative ways to help Ukraine, but we also have to weigh the benefits against the risks in each case. So far, there is no difference. This is the approved decision, summarized the Dutch defense minister. Sending foreign troops to Ukraine could help free up Ukrainian defenders and send them to the front, said retired Major Alexei Getman, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war. What Macron said about the foreign legion, God himself commands that it be done. Firstly, there are many ethnic Ukrainians there and they have the right to use this legion in any point on the globe where there is a danger for France, of course. Partner troops need to be involved, since this will allow us to defeat evil faster with fewer losses, he explained in an interview with Ukrainian radio. According to Hetman, foreign troops could be involved in protecting the border with Belarus. He emphasized that this is not about participating in military actions and Ukraine has the right to invite foreign troops. There are no violations of international law in this. Foreign military could free up our troops and send them to areas of the front where there is a shortage of personnel. We would need 100 to 160,000 soldiers who would go not to the front line but to other positions. It would become easier for us to fight. Western partners must understand that the Third World War is unfolding and we will have to fight anyway, the veteran stated. Earlier, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said that sending Western troops to Ukraine will lead to a direct clash of nuclear powers. The practical implementation of this idea, you know what it will lead to. I can repeat for those who may have forgotten. It will lead to a direct clash of nuclear powers with catastrophic consequences, she stressed. Since February 2022, Western strategy toward Ukraine has had two central elements. Firstly, massive military and economic support to Ukraine to ensure it can survive as an independent state. But secondly, avoidance of the direct involvement of Western militaries because, as President Joe Biden has put it, that would risk World War III. The result has been two bright lines preventing escalation. No Russian attacks on NATO countries. No Western forces directly fighting Russia in Ukraine. The recent debate with suggestions of deploying small numbers of European forces to help operate air defense systems lacks seriousness. What would happen if European troops were killed? If European states did nothing, their bluff would have been called. The alternative would likely be to deploy even more forces.